All right, my name is um, Fon Tommy, a pastor of Peace Ike Ministry. And I'm here with my friend Robert Linus. And I'm here to talk to him about the life and times of Prophet T.B. Joshua. You know, sometimes 2011, I met uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua in a very mysterious way. Up to now, I can't really explain what took me down there. Though I went to do some kind of jobs there, but I, I fell in love with Prophet T.B. Joshua. You know, before I got to a synagogue church of all nations, um, I, I've, I've been um, one of the people that used to criticize and talk about the man of God. I never knew that I was talking about the real man of God. Something happened the day the disciple came into my room and called me to meet him. I couldn't hold my tears throughout the night. Because when I saw the man, he was very different from what people used to say. He was very humble. Do you know that Prophet T.B. Joshua stood up to wake... Imagine me at 2011. To welcome me and apologize for not seeing me on time. And welcome me and give me a place to sit. I was like, is this a man these people have been saying all this thing about? A very humble, gentle, and... Oh, God. I saw the spirit of God in this man. You know, I couldn't withstand the presence of Prophet T.B. Joshua. I couldn't look at his eyes. It was so serious like that. And something happened. Before I left for uh, uh, Synagogue of the I was just like a normal church goer, where we hear the normal gospel and everything. But when I got to Synagogue Church of All Nation, I knew that there's something about God that I've not known. Something about God that I never knew. Something about God I never unlocked. I saw raw miracles. You know, this, this, he used to tell me that these things that affect stage manage. I saw when these sick people came. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, this one, I saw when this one come, came. Let me see. Let me see how this one will be healed. If this one is healed, then I will know. Okay, so matter of fact, I have my personal testimony. I used to smoke. Really? The Bible says, there's no, Satan cannot fight Satan. For me to smoke and live a bad life means that Satan is in control of my life, right? Exactly. Satan cannot tell me to be a good person. I used to smoke, I used to have pains on my legs. If I walk like this for two minutes, I will fall down on the ground. My kneecap will move out of joints and I will fall down on the ground. That has been my life. Everybody knew that. Just a touch by wise man Harry. And I was totally delivered from the spirit of smoke. Up till today, I don't have the urge to smoke. My kneecap that used to make noise and be... Up to today, I do you know that I forgot that I had that problem. It was when I went home for holiday that I said, Wait, no orch of smoke, the kneecap is still there. Then this man is a real man of God. I learned that no matter who offends me, no matter what anybody would do to me, I don't have the right to hold offense against that person. Exactly. Why? Because I too, in one way or the other, have also offended some other person. So that's, this looks very impossible. This looks very difficult. But that's the life. Do you know what offends me the most? He preaches love and practices love. He, he doesn't say one thing and go around and start. Do something else. He acts. So, in short, most of the time, it's not what he says, it's what he does. You look at him and you say, This man is a man of God. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> I came back from Synagogue Church of All Nations and it took me a long time to start going to church. Because I saw God. I saw the de definition of God, the power of God. And coming back to my local church, it was nothing. I did not see anything anymore. TV is gone. It's not all about Emmanuel TV. It's not all about Synagogue of All Nations. It's about the entire world. Let me tell you something. There's how something wants to happen in this country, in this continent, in the world. The Bible says God will never do anything without talking to his prophet first. And this man will secretly go to pray about it for us. My, I'm, I'm so afraid that if something is about to befall this world or this country or this continent, who will stand in the gap for us? Who will have the love to stand in the gap for us without looking for Anyone to notice him? Without waiting, yes, or without waiting for anybody to say, "Oh, 
Um, and tomorrow I'll be going to prayer mountain and I'll pray for all of you so that when I come back, when you see results, you know that I... you will not do that. You will just see him praying. He's the only prophet that I prophesied that coronavirus will be in three stages. The first one, the second one. I'm telling you right now, the third one will come out. Nobody has prophesied about it. The third one, Delta Stream right now is in, a, is, in, South, is in USA. Let them challenge me. Nobody has said it. Nobody. Today we've lost, the world have lost the prophets. Just like Abraham, just like Samuel, just like prophet of old. I'm going to tell you, I know you have not seen it before. I'm telling you from experience. I'm telling you because I've been there. I've been there. The little time I spent there, I knew that this man is a man of God. Okay, look at my ministry. I have a ministry today. Okay. The only thing I got from Prophet Richard was a handshake. That's that. And see what is happening in my ministry today. Exactly what is happening in Sinagos of all nations. And I promise to make sure that that legacy continues. Nothing will stop me from giving. I learned how to give from Prophet Richard. You don't give because you have. You give because you know what it means not to have. You give to someone that's hungry because you know what it means to be hungry. You give to someone that doesn't have money because you know what it means not to have money. Exactly. That's what he thought to say. Spend more on others, less on yourself. So that means, even when I don't have much, the little I have, I can see Shay. It said one thing. He said, there's no boy that doesn't have what to give. No matter how poor you are, you have what to give. Exactly. It may not be money, maybe your time. Maybe your encouragement, maybe your advice. And all we need to do is to keep that legacy on by emulating him. Let me tell you something. Generation 10 and 20 generations after now will never forget property not in, not in He day. has kept a shoe that nobody will be able to put his or her leg. I'm telling you. I've been a church worker. I know what I'm saying. He has kept a shoe that nobody will be able to put his or leg in that shoe. Sometimes he, he behaves as if he's not a human being. As if he's an angel or one spirit. Someone offends you. That man is the most persecuted man in the whole world. The most persecuted pastor. If you have any other person, let me know. Nobody. You will sit keep quiet. Forgive. He will never stand on his altar and call out anybody. And say, eh, hey. so that person said this about me. I will never hear him in his life. I just pray that I will live that kind of life as a pastor. And as you say, 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 it's a honor that God will tell you when you will die. You know when you want to go. And I pray that one, the day I will go, I will be like my father. He's my father. He's my all. Somebody asked me something that they said, okay, now that he's gone, are you going to get another spiritual father? And I told him something. He said, if your father is dead, will he have any other father again? Mm. He said, no. I said, then that's the thing. So I will live by the teachings of my father. He has left so many teachings on ground. I will live by those teachings and live my life. I don't have any other person again. The world have missed the prophets. I don't know if he was a prophet. I don't know if he was even God. Because the things he used to do when he was alive, I've never seen anybody. I've never heard of him bragging about I have sons here and there. But when he died, I knew that he had sons that people that used to brag about having sons. Prophet that I knew all over the world. I never knew that they had anything to do with prophet hmm. He has never talked about having a prophet yet. But didn't he have one? He has one? No, I'm not aware. <laughs> See? He has it. He's living inside the church. He doesn't have a house anywhere else. My parlor is more beautiful than... He spent more on others than himself. and less on himself. He taught us that and lived by example. Hmm. So want to say, Prophet Tibi Joshua, we always remember you. And our legacy will live forever. We condole with the entire synagogue of all nations and Emmanuel TV. All of us at Peace Act Ministry send our condolences. And we know definitely that you are with God. One thing I, I said that, I said, God, I know he's with you. In short, if Prophet TV Joshua is with you, I want to see him. I prayed that prayer on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, he appeared to me. And took me around. And I said, yes, this is what I was looking for. Yes. So thank you so much, Prophet Tibi Joshua, for your teaching, 
for making me to be a better Christian, for making me to understand that God is so unlimited, he can do anything. I learned it from you. Today I can do deliverance, prophesy. I saw you doing those things and I said, Father, I want to be like my father. And I've seen it happening in my life. I pray that your soul will rest in perfect peace. Amen. The entire world will miss you. Emmanuel, God is surely with us. Amen.